Hey, good morning, everyone. Glenn Kellaway coming to you from the basement. It's Thursday, October 26th. The reason I am mentioning the date today is because tonight I am going to Massey Hall to see Bob Dylan. I couldn't be more excited. I want to show you a couple of Dylan things uh, in a minute. First of all, um, 9 o'clock this morning, the Beatles did the major announcement on the blue and white albums coming out with added tracks. Uh, the new Beatles song now and then included um, should be interesting. I'm going to leave it at that. I just did a video on the stone saying I ain't buying it because I know where it's going to end up sitting on my shelf. And I uh, got a lot of response to that video. I think a lot of you agree with me, but there are a lot of people loving the Stones album. I'm not dissing the album in any way. I just know from my listening habits that it's a waste of $20 or $40 or whatever the heck it's going to cost me. So enough of that. The Beatles, I'm almost thinking the same thing. It says they're all newly remixed. My question is, remix from what? Um, if it's the master tapes, you're looking at a treasure here. Um, if you think back when the uh, mono box set was released and the stereo box set was released, there's a reason the mono box set sells on the used market for $2,000 and the stereo box set you can probably pick up for five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800 because the stereo box set was mastered from digital recordings the mono box set was all analog and sounds absolutely incredible um is are these digital remixes or what what are they they're not giving us that information and i think a lot of people are interested in that i've got a really bad cold so i sound all stuffy uh what else is on my list uh beetle stones um when I did uh, my video saying I'm not sure if the Beatles are really my favorite band anymore, my uh, good friend Dave Pounds, who always makes great comments, Dave, uh, I appreciate very much because he's so honest with me. If he thinks I'm an idiot, he just comes right in and says, I, I completely disagree with this nonsense. He's very direct, and I, I, I love it. So thank you, Dave. Dave made a comment that said, uh, what if you could only choose uh, one, I think he was kind of sticking up for the Beatles in this regard, if you could only choose one artist slash band and you could have their complete catalog of music and that's the only thing you got to listen to the rest of your life, you had to give up everything else, who would it be? I'm kind of working this through my head this to for a future video. Um, I'm not sure if it would be the Beatles or not, as much as, uh, boy, would I ever miss not having their music around. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'd need something a bit more in-depth, something a bit more eclectic. That's a really good question, Dave. Thank you for that. Um, i got to think about that one. If anybody has any opinions on it, leave a comment. Now, Bob, going to see Bob Dylan tonight at Massey Hall. We have tickets in the, uh, Massey Hall is a main floor, a balcony, and what they call a gallery, which is like a second balcony. We are in the first row of that second balcony, just to the side. So Bob's here, we're kind of looking down on him from an angle. Uh, first row in, the, in that balcony is great. First of all, Massey Hall, you've never been there. It should be on your bucket list. The acoustics in there are absolutely incredible. Really excited. So back in 2014, my brother-in-law and I had tickets to see Neil Young at Massey Hall. And uh, it was a freezing cold day in February. And um, <clears throat> my brother-in-law said, let's go down early and see if we can get Neil Young's autograph. I'm going, are you an idiot? So anyway, we went. And sure enough, Neil's bus, which he calls Pocahontas, is parked out back at Massey Hall. We're standing there freezing our asses off for about 20 minutes, half an hour. Who comes walking out the back of Massey Hall but Neil Young? Neil, would you sign this stuff? I have a proud autograph of Neil on a cover of Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere, CD cover, which is framed on my wall. Um, so my 
nephew Jack, who's going with me today, we're both going to go down to Massey Hall early. Going to be down there about 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. Just going to hang out for a while and see. Uh, I'm not expecting, I think the chances are slim and none. But if there's a slim chance, I'm willing to give up an hour or two hours of my time just in case. And because having a Bob Dylan autograph would be a holy grail for me. <coughs> now, I just wanted to talk about some of the bootleg stuff that's come out. I don't think there's another artist, whether you like Bob Dylan or don't like Bob Dylan, that could produce 17 or 18 volumes of a bootleg series with all with not only alternate takes, songs we've never heard before. I mean, just incredible. This man is a, just a, a songwriting machine. And uh, the first volume that came out was called Bootleg Series Volume 1 to 3. I don't think they... Uh, I'm not sure. I could be wrong. I'm not sure they knew how that this would end up extending for years and years and years into up to Volume 18. But um, because the first Volume 1 to 3... Uh, volume 1 is very early stuff from the first album, uh, but there's stuff on here like Hard Times in New York Town, He Was a Friend of Mine, stuff that never showed up on albums. And uh, the second disc, Mummy, uh, second disc, Volume 2, is Mummy, You've Been on My Mind, Farewell Angelina, one of my top probably 20 Dylan songs. Um, if You Gotta go, go, Gotta Go Now, which I've just recently found out he recorded in... England with John Mayles Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton. Um, yeah, Wallflower. There's lots of stuff here that were just gems that were never released. And then the third disc was getting more current with stuff from Blood on the Tracks. There's a song called Catfish about Catfish Hunter. Bob's a big Bob, uh, baseball fan. Um, Angelina's a great song. Another one that never heard, uh, Blind Willie McTell, which was left off the Infidels album. It's a great song. Bob, how did you leave that off Infidels? And Series of Dreams, uh, which uh, is a killer track, which was never released on an album. So this was pretty mind-blowing when it came out. Then they started putting out more, and then they started doing these re deluxe series. Now, I'm not showing you these in order, I don't think, but... Uh, this is volume 11, Bob Dylan and the Band of Basement Tapes, complete. I mean, this is insane. This is uh, six CDs of everything that Dylan and the band recorded in the basement in Woodstock, New York. I mean, there's some real crap on here. There's some real gems on here. But all these sets come with a book. And... It, it's just so well done. It's just the packaging, the photos, the in-depth stuff, the way they package the CDs. I love uh, just like that. But just amazing, amazing set. So I, I treasure these. These will n never leave my, uh, my fingers or my shelf or my stereo system. I've been getting myself prepared for the Dylan show by listening, revisiting a lot of this stuff. This one is a favorite. Another self-portrait. Now, the self-portrait album was really panned when it came out in 1971, I think it was. I mean, it's just a bunch of uh, covers and uh, odd songs and a real m mishmash of stuff. People did not like it, but this set is fantastic. It's got a lot of the rough demos he did with David Bromberg, one of my favorite guitar players. It's got a couple of tracks here that are absolutely incredible. Spanish is the um, Loving Tongue, which is unreleased from Southport. Beautiful song. And Went to See the Gypsy. Um, fantastic. Great. If you're looking to buy any of these, I should rank them, but this is definitely an excellent one. This one is fantastic, too. One of the more current ones. It's volume 16. Um, I think we got 17 volumes right now. Volume 16. This is uh, a lot of stuff from um, Street Legal. The opening track, on, I believe, on Street Legal, Senor. 
Um, if it's not the opening track, it's one of them. Um, but there's a version of here, a haunting version of Senor, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, there's uh, outtakes from uh, Infidels on here as well. Great alternate takes of Joker Man. Again, Blind Willie McTell is on here too. Um, excellent, excellent set too. Uh, this is the one I got most recently, which I just did a re recent video and I showed it. The Cutting Edge. This really um, focuses on the trilogy of Dylan albums, which no one's ever matched. I don't care what artist. Bring it all back home. Highway 61, Blonde on Blonde. I mean, that, that period of a year and a half or whatever, he recorded those three albums. Think about how did one man write those songs in that short amount of time? incredible um, but uh, this really goes into depth on there there's one disc that just has every take of like a rolling stone so you can see its progress from start to finish product excellent one here for blood on the tracks called more blood more tracks this is volume 14 of the series um, has just uh, it does to Blood on the Tracks what, what the Cutting Edge did for those three trilogy of albums. Same type of thing. Fantastic. And the most recent one is called Fragments, Volume 17. It is focused on the Time Out of Mind sessions, 1996-97. This is fantastic. There is a... Uh, um, they, they uh, give you the complete Time Out of Mind album without the Daniel Lanois uh, effects and production. Really scaled down, very raw, sounds fantastic. I think I, as much as I love Daniel Lanois, nothing but respect for his work. Um, it's really nice to hear this really kind of just bare bones version of that album. It's well worth a listen. This is a great, great set. Fantastic. Who knows what Volume 18 is going to bring us. And um, I will be back with a review of that concert, I'm sure, tomorrow. And uh, everyone have a great day. Beatles coming out November 3rd to the 10th or something like that, if you're excited. Cool. Have a great day. Bye.